to represent all of us, to, to be the type of candidate um, who can relate, I think is the best type of candidate to represent all of Michigan. Um, and then being born and raised in Detroit with a wife who was born and raised in the Grand Rapids area and uh, having a, a camp uh, up in the UP, um, being a combat veteran who understands national security. Who understands that this world is a dangerous, dangerous place. And we need people on the floor of the U.S. Senate who understand how to keep Americans safe because they have experience doing it before. Remember when experience was important? Remember that? Remember, remember when, we, when we used to almost consider military service a prerequisite before running for high political office? It's not because there's any magic fairy dust sprinkled on your DD-214. Did you know what I'm talking about? Right? But it's because you had certain skills, a certain ability to understand how to work with anyone and everyone to accomplish mission. How not to make it about black or white, but about red, white, and blue. That's what you I mean, even if you were in the Navy, we still love you too. It's the same thing because we love everyone, right? right? Now, and, and, but I recognize, not just from a national security standpoint, but also when you take a look at how we've failed our veterans, and when you consider that Debbie Stabenow has used our vets as a prop, I mean, we've been at war for over a decade and a half. We still haven't welcomed our Vietnam vets back properly. That's right. That's true. The Vietnam War officially ended the first year that Debbie Stabenow was elected to office. Thank you. In 1975, yet she goes to a veteran service organization and said that she was unaware of our issues. It, it wasn't on her radar screen. 22 vets per day die, and it didn't make a nick on her priority level. Because you know when Chuck Schumer is telling you how to vote, it's tough to let anything else creep in from Michigan. That's right. Yeah. When she votes with Chuck Schumer and Hillary Clinton 95 and 93 percent of the time, that's a solid A as a New York senator. You tell me if you're a Democrat or Republican how that represents our interests. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. The thing is, I truly believe standing here right now, both parties have failed the American people. Amen. That's right. Amen. Both parties have failed Michigan. And having the courage and the ability to stand up and say it, that we need to have someone who will put people before the parties. Yeah. That's right. We need to have someone with values do the right thing. I was raised by a pair of Democrats from, from the South. <laughs> and guess what they taught me? They taught me to put my phone on mute before somebody came. <laughs> they taught me values. Faith in family, God and country, and service yes. before self. I got that from a pair of Democrats because they were raised during a time when the leader of yeah. the Democrat Party said, Ask not what your country yeah. can do for yeah. you, yeah. but what you can do for your country. Yeah. Yeah. Check this out. This is the America that's being torn away from us right now. Amen. When you have a Marxist Amen. left yes. that is pulling yes. us so far that even moderates will be considered conservative. Mm -hmm. See, the thing is, the faith and family, God and country, service before self, those aren't conservative values. Those are American values. Those are red, white, and blue values. That are black and white values. Those are male and female values. Those are gay and straight values. Those are American values. And we've forgotten that. The foundation of this country is built on faith and family. But you're being told that those are Republican conservative values because there's a, an element that's trying to put programs in places of, of, of fathers staying in the home and taking care of their babies. Right. They're trying to put programs in place of giving people a chance at economic opportunity. We need to have people on the floor of the U.S. Senate who understands what's at stake, not just for the future of our children, but how are we going to make sure that everybody can come up? Everybody, whether you're in a factory or a farm. See, the thing is, when you choose your party over your people, then I mean, I, 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 mean, I can't even. I, I can't even. How can you campaign on the same promises that you made back in 2000? How can you say that back in back in the year 2000, like the way you you, I don't just talk about jobs because. Jobs are just a part of the equation. They are not a solution on their own. 
See, you didn't take a, a couple look at, you didn't take a look at this, but the thing is, when people like Debbie Stabenow, you know you're talking to a politician when they just talk about jobs. When they only talk about jobs. Who's talking about the job creators? Who's talking about the farmers? Who's talking about the innovators? Who's talking about creating an environment where people will, will <laughs> attract and retain talent here in Michigan? Who's talking about a situation where we can in, inspire and attract more capital investment into Michigan? Because right now, we talk a lot. We talk a lot about competing with Mexico and China for our jobs. Do you know we're competing with Tennessee and Texas? Yeah. You know we're competing with South Carolina and Alabama? Mm -hmm. Do you know we have a regulatory situation that's crushing our farmers and Debbie Stabenow's allowing it to happen? Do you know they're dumping cherry tart, tart cherry concentrate into this area? Did you know that it was the Trump administration that fixed a more level playing field with Canada for our dairy farmers and not yeah. Debbie Stabenow? Right. But she's going to start commercial affairs. Right. 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 see the President of the United States. I was introduced to the President of the United States in the Oval Office. I was introduced by the Vice President. Now think about this for a second. I'm a 37-year-old black guy from Detroit. I'm the Republican nominee for U.S. Senate in the state of Michigan. Now think about this. One generation ago, one generation ago, one generation ago, my father lived in a dirt floor house directly across the street from Mississippi State University. One generation ago, he couldn't go to Mississippi State University because he was black. One generation ago. But he refused to accept dependency as his destiny. You hear that? He refused to be a victim. And right now, the left part of the Democrat Party is saying that you are a victim and you need to be taken care of by the government. Yeah. Debbie Stabenow supports this. Because the thing is, my father recognized that was a lie back in 1941. And that's a lie. Yeah. In this country, in this country, yes. There is a disproportionate uh, 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 level of advantage that some of us enjoy, but in, rather than looking at and having laser-focused vision on, on the results and the bad things, we need to take a look at making sure that everybody has equal opportunity, equal economic opportunity to succeed. My father refused to be a victim, and he worked and he served honorably in Vietnam, and he came back to where the opportunity was in Michigan. People came from all over the world and all over the country to Michigan because this is the place, this is the birthplace of the middle class. It's the home of the American dream. And Debbie Stapenow has washed our roads, washed our sewers, washed our schools, washed our neighborhoods, washed our farms crumble over the past 43 years. What makes us think that she's going to be any more effective as a legislator over the next six than she's been in the past 43? That's right. Not nothing. But the, the, the fact remains is that when you understand that what we can do in this country in one generation, my father was able to come out of the situation he was, start a trucking company with one truck, one trailer, and no excuses because he worked his tail off and he was able to take a company from nothing and hand me over a company in 2012 from 35 million at 35 million. He took it from nothing to 35 million and in five years. In five years, I was able to help take it from 35 million to 127 million, 137 million, and add over 100 jobs. See, see, adding jobs, creating jobs, creating the economic opportunity, and being able to do that in a situation where I can go to West Point, graduate from West Point in 2004, become a Ranger qualified Apache pilot, fly 750 hours combat in Operation Rocky Freedom, get two master's degrees, start a family, grow a company by 233%, and now run for U.S. Senate. And because of your hope, because of your faith, because of your effort, because of your contribution, because of your love, now he has a son knocking on the door of the U.S. Senate, being introduced to the President of the United States by the Vice President of the United States in one generation. Yeah. And now, and now we're setting up a situation. We're setting up a situation where we've replaced, we've replaced, this government has forgotten how to govern a free people. It's forgotten, it's forgotten its roots, it's forgotten its people, it's forgotten its constitution. It's forgotten that we are part of the 1% who's ever breathed free on this planet. 
the ones who have the responsibility and the privilege to elect their leaders. But with a Congress with an approval rating of 9% and people who vote below 40%, it's our fault that they are failing. We keep sending the same failures back. Our Constitution was written by geniuses and is now being run into the ground by clowns. And it is our fault. It is our fault. It is our fault. We have an obligation not to ourselves, but to future generations. We have an obligation to stand up and say, it is time for a change. It is time for them to go. Yes. And we live in a country that we need to protect and preserve the Constitution. And everyone in here yes. has a responsibility to do that. We talk a lot about rights in this country. And we don't talk enough about responsibilities. Right. That little girl That's walking right. in the door right now, how old is she, sir? She's three. She's three years old. What's her name? Amelia. Amelia is three years old. Amelia is three years old. Will she have the same opportunities to be successful that we have right now? Let's hope so. I don't know. Or will there be a government program that makes sure that she can get everything paid for she'll have to wait in line for days and days and days? No. No. We can't. We, and, and they've already told us what they want, what they want to happen. That's true. And, and, and I, I've been always taught. Believe them. Believe them. When people show you who they are, believe them. They're talking about taking a total government takeover of our health care, giving everything control to the federal government. I believe that our health care should, I should be making my decisions about my health care. My doctor and I should be making decisions about my health care. Not the federal government, not the insurance companies. We need to be empowering our families. We, rather... <laughs> so, it is tough to do this. <laughs> it, it's tough to do this. To run when your heart is breaking. My heart is breaking for my people. And my people, black or white, male or female, my heart is breaking. Because I understand that we've been so tremendously blessed and we're allowing it to slip through our fingers. Yes, yes. We have to do something. Let us be your glue. Yeah. I am just a servant. I'm just the candidate. I'm just one vote. I'm just one vote. I, I, I'm just a man. That's it. All I'm trying to do is be obedient. God knows I don't want to go to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Have you ever? I mean, I'm standing right here in, in this room. I told you that both parties have failed. That includes the Republican Party. Yeah. Yeah. That includes yeah. the Democrat yeah. Party. Yeah. And I'm telling you that I don't want to go to Washington. Isn't that weird? But that's the thing. But that's the thing. I want to go to Washington just as badly as I wanted to go to war. But I'm old enough to remember as well when we as Americans did what we had to do, not what we wanted. Yes. All right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. When, when we did, when we sacrificed, when we knew what needed to be done and we were willing to fight for right, not fight each other. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to fit in anybody's little red box or anybody's blue box that I don't care to because neither do you. Anybody going to put you in a category and define you as that? No. no. I'm American. I'm American. And everything that says black Republican, no, I'm American. And I'm here to represent everybody. And um, I think the first step in doing that is listening. No one's listening. Anyway. And so we need somebody who's going to put the partisanship behind and put leadership. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. You know what? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. That's right. So, look, like one of my heroes, Esther, said, if I perish, I perish. There you yes. go. But I will go yes. if you see me. So thank you so much for your love, for your faith, for your prayers, and for all of your support. And from me to you, personally, honestly, I'm going to do everything I can to find you signs. We ordered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do everything I can to get you signs. But uh, until we do, I need you to help me out. I need you to talk to the people who are who couldn't be here today. Yeah. And I need you to say to them, let's fly on three. Ready? We're going to say, I'm going to say one, two, three. We're going to say, let's fly. I'll get out of your hair and you can get on with your weekend. So ready? One, two, three. Let's fly! Thank you all so much.